After seeing controversy around the Met Gala 2018 theme, Heavenly Bodies, it sparked an interest as to whether it is right to use religious symbolism as a fashion statement. As a Christian myself, I wondered whether wearing a religious symbol meant anything to others in the same way that it resonates with me. This led me to look into the history and use of religious symbolism within the fashion industry, how it is being used currently and how it could be used in the future. Recently we are seeing a shift. High-end designers are using much more thoughtful inspiration in their designs and executing this in a respectful way. But we are now at the point where this needs to be filtered down into the lower end market in the same thoughtful and inclusive way, especially catering for modest dresses. So I'm starting at the beginning. I'm about to chat to the Christian Society here at NTU. I want to hear what they have to say about religious symbolism being used as a fashion statement. I'm finding out whether they find it inappropriate or have even thought about it before. So what is your personal relationship to the cross symbol? Is it something that's like quite sensitive to you or like meaningful to you? Absolutely meaningful. It's like the centre of everything. It's literally the reason I do everything I do now. That's like the bottom line of Christianity, that we have grace. And when you see that in that context, then it is important. But maybe outside of the context, it's just across things like the stained glass window and that kind of thing i can appreciate that as yeah. as an art in itself and and as a cultural the beauty thing. of it yeah um so i want to show you this so this is like um the upside down cross symbol so this was like a trend i think like 2013 maybe i i actually had uh, like a tank top and it had the symbol right in the middle i'm a christian myself and I was completely ignorant to what it actually meant. It was in fashion at the time, I wanted one. Um, do you know what that symbol actually means? I, I mean, I know that it's something that's like, that's counter Christian. Yeah, I read that it's, it's um, a symbol used by Satanists against yeah. Christianity, basically. Mm -hmm. If I knew that at the time I was wearing this, I would, I would never ever want to like yeah. say that. Consumers may not really know what that means. I know what that means yeah. and I'm like, I don't think I would want to wear it. So what I'm sort of like leading on to now after having this conversation, I've seen a shift basically. So in the past, a lot of Christianity, um, Catholicism, that them sort of religions, westernised religions really, have been used within fashion and art. Now, we're seeing much more of a shift. So we're seeing a lot of like Islamic sort of designs. Um, so many designers now have made like modest fashion ranges, headscarves, that sort of thing. So that's what I'm sort of like looking into now. Um, so I was just wondering whether you have seen that sort of shift yourself. Yeah, so like noticing on social media, it's been really nice seeing them lead it. It's a thing, it's a chance for them to express themselves. Yeah. From fashion's perspective, mm -hmm. I think it's a very good opportunity for um, with Muslim women to be represented in the fashion industry. Oh, I really appreciate you guys Aww. doing this. It's been really so the discoveries I've made so far is that the definition of modest fashion is changing. Modest no longer necessarily has a religious meaning, but is meant for everyone who chooses to dress in a modest way for their own personal reasons. So I wanted to get the opinion of the consumers themselves and see what they think about the topic. So I've organised a meeting with the Islamic Society here at NTU and three female members of the society are going to answer some questions I have on the topic. Would you say that you all have an interest in fashion? Like, would you say that you follow trends, sort of spend, like, disposable money on clothes? Yeah, I do like clothes. Yeah? Right? yeah. And I do like fashion and I like yeah. doing my own thing as well. It's just the way of expressing yourself. Yeah. And and a way of identifying yourself. Yeah. When it comes to modest clothing, it's ridiculously expensive. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. The best is if you go to markets so like uh, oh. Birmingham and stuff. And they it's have like, like you have to travel for there. five pounds. Oh, That's the thing. So it's like you have to travel to London or like yeah. Birmingham, but right. it's so expensive. Like I don't, I don't know if you know what a buyer is. No, so it's like true. a long dress. So it's like yeah, this what I'm wearing. Oh, okay. And yeah. like it's like seventy pounds, and I'm like I'm a student. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. So yeah, that is so much. Yeah. Out the images in front of you, I want you to pick one that describes how shopping for modest fashion makes you feel. So this is online, I'd say. So how online shopping makes you feel. This one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mine's easy. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. 
Yeah, I think a combination of these three, but really? yeah. <laughs> just because I find it really hard to choose things, I'm really indecisive. So you like feel frustrated, basically. Yeah. yeah. Why is that? Because it's so hard to find things. I think because it's such a like kind of a, like a niche, I guess. So it's like really expensive. Yeah. And then like when you find when you do find the cheaper things, it's either be like you have to travel to get it, mm -hmm. or it's just the quality is not good. Yeah. And it's just if it was like and the price is extra. Yeah. Oh, the price. Like, <laughs> sales section. It's just crop tops. Yeah, so I'm so, yeah. Especially when it comes to like actual like the high street um, fashion retailers, when you're trying to find something modest, it's like I'll find a skirt, but it has like a slit, so I can't really. <laughs> yeah. Wear it, so yeah. Yeah. It's really hard. That that's I've like heard that a lot. Like it's just so difficult to find something that actually is modest. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and if you do like, especially if you're not really like a person that knows how to put things together, if you just want to find something that's just yeah. modest and just simple, and that's it then it's a bit hard to find it. But if you like someone that can play with clothes and like put them together and layer up and do all of that stuff, then it's not as hard, but yeah. you know, you can still And like I feel like with like now, the fashion is like wearing like really short, tight stuff and it looks cute and stuff, mm -hmm. but it's like, we still exist, so we still need yeah. them as well. Exactly, yeah. So yeah. That, yeah, because like obviously like it's such a big part of like the society now. Yeah. yeah. You know, it and it's not even just for Muslim women, it's just for women in exactly. general that want to wear modest yeah. clothes. Yeah. Do you think you'd want to sort of shop in high street shops rather than modest, particular like modest fashion websites or do you not really mind? I would like to see more. Clothing. Yeah, yeah, I think it, it wouldn't it even be hard because um, I think, was it H&M or something like yeah. that that had a line of modest clothing yeah. and they, they just had like a did, combi yeah. of uh, the basic, you know, a bear, the basic Moroccan style really? or just Arab style clothes yeah, and, no, it was, so and it was so like overpriced, I mean you can get that from like either a basic Muslim or Arab shop for like five ten pounds and there it was like seventy five pounds. I was like, oh my god. But do you remember that thing? And, and thing is, they just like copy that kind of style where which you can already get for less price when they could just do the same tops and the same clothes that they do just a bit longer or just a bit longer sleeve. Yeah. yeah. A bit longer like this or a bit larger size. You know, like yeah, it's not hard right. to do. Why that. should you have to have? A completely different collection as well. Yeah, you know? exactly. It, it shouldn't be a different collection. They're trying collection. to be inclusive, but really, they're, they're not. Excluding <laughs> you completely. Yeah. So my name is Andrea. Um, right, um, I'm a revert. I converted to Islam about two years ago, and I'm here to talk about why I'm modest and what modesty means to me. Um, so modesty to me is like not just a way of um, like following my religion, it's also a way of me being free, it, it makes me feel free and it's like a way of expressing myself as well, it's like part of my identity now. Um, I've started wearing it about two years ago, actually before I even converted to Islam because I really like the idea of it. I like the idea of like having that control over what you show and what you don't show. And like, I really like the way it looked as well. It looked kind of pretty to me, so yeah. And it's a thing of like, um, kind of not abiding by society's rules and norms and stuff, kind of having that freedom of um, dressing however I want and being myself and not having to compare myself too much basically. Hi, my name is Fatima. I'm from Kettering and I was born into Islam. What does modest fashion mean to you? So not only is it my religion but it's also my identity. I started wearing my scarf during secondary school um, at first, I wasn't very keen on wearing my scarf because I was quite because I went to a um, all white school and I was literally the only Muslim at the time. I was really really scared to wear my hijab, but then when I started wearing it, I just felt way more confident. And I know most times when people go home, they take off their hijab, but I literally don't take my hijab off. I just feel way more confident with my hijab on. I love my hijab, and I literally couldn't imagine myself not wearing my hijab. My name is Rahila, I'm from Kettering and I was born into Islam. What does modest fashion mean to you? Um, modest fashion is quite a relief in a way. Like today, in today's society I guess, 
where we have like no makeup looks and stuff, we have to look effortlessly pretty. It's sort of a way to relax and just be yourself. You don't have to conform to anyone's ideas because you're just being pretty or not being pretty for yourself. Today I'm meeting fellow student here at Nottingham Trent, Sadiqa and her sister Noor, who are both interested in the gap in the modest fashion market and aspire to create a modest fashion business together. Today we are chatting about what is wrong with the existing market and what does the future for modest fashion hold? So, I wanted to ask first of all, as yourselves and modest dresses, what have you sort of struggled with most when like shopping for clothes? Um, so the thing that I found most of all is that fashionable, like modern, modest fashion is just far too expensive and far too, like just not accessible really. Um, so yeah, just would you agree with that and like sort of what have you found that's the hardest? Yeah, we have. Something we've struggled a lot is um, dressing for hot weather because okay. obviously you have to wear thin clothing or, you know, you have to, well we have to layer so you can't really wear short sleeves, you have to wear something over the top or underneath and then there's not very, um, like modest clothing out there so long dresses or mm -hmm. long skirts or sh um, long sleeves so that's something and it's also expensive or the modest clothes isn't very fashionable, yeah. so it's not got a lot of range in the sense of the textures and the colours and patterns, so okay. it's hard to be quite stylish. Um, so at the moment, where do you shop mostly for your, for your clothes? I guess <laughs> Among this, make yeah, clothes. this is yeah. Yeah. We actually don't, I haven't shopped in quite well. So you understand sort of how much things cost, Definitely, yeah. Yeah, so where, like, where to get it from, yeah. so I can understand you have more of a frustration why all these things are so expensive if Definitely. you know how much it costs. Yeah, that is true. And also, you see how hard the um, the seamstresses work and the detail that goes into it and the pattern cutting side uh -huh. and all of that. So it's hard work as well. But also, when you see like basic things, you see you think why is it so expensive when it yeah you know, when it doesn't have to be. Um, yeah, did you see the H&M collection that came out? Um, yes. I knew about it, but I didn't yeah, actually see there, it. There was like loads of controversy around it. Basically, it's this uh, top one. Yeah. All oh, right. Basically, they they just thought that no thought went into it. Really, a lot of the things were see through and not really modest. Um, or, and people just thought that it was sort of a print just put onto a, a oh. long dress and not really thought yeah, out. Yeah. Um, yeah, just wondered like what you thought about that, like. Do you think that there needs to be more thought behind it? There needs to be people like yourselves that are the brains behind these things because you know what people want. Definitely, because um, not only is it about um, like the length of things, but it's also about the styles that go through and um, making sure like necklines as well and things like that. Okay, yeah. But also, if it's for hot weather, you don't want you want it to be modest, but also not a lot of. Um, like not a lot of layers. yeah layers right. and making sure like the sleeves are long or the skirts are long and mm. making sure it has an actual long length. Yeah. So, so when it is see through, you have to wear something underneath it right. to make sure you are covered. Yeah. Because when the sun hits, you're going to be exposed. Yeah. That's all yeah. We want to just make sure like people with our style can also dress right. the same whilst being covered and staying stylish mm -hmm. and and keeping their religion but also being confident with what they were. I think if people were exposed to more styles mm -hmm. and wearing more colours and different styles and materials then maybe they'd, be, they'd find themselves more within fashion and be confident because I think that's what we struggle a lot with like um, finding yourself in self-love yeah. and you can find um, yourself through clothes I think, yeah. it's a big thing. I think if we had a brand we'd love to have fashion shows and it doesn't have right. to be like, um, it doesn't have to be like expensive tickets and stuff, I'd love loads of people to come and loads of people to model. Yeah, no, I think that's like a perfect thing to do because it you want it to be sort of celebrating. Yeah. Yeah. You, and you, know. you, want, you want to feel how they feel when they wear the clothes and really yeah. have expression themselves when they walk and smiles on their face and having fun. Yeah, a lot a lot of people think that covering yourself up means something completely different to that, yeah. you know, you really, you're still expressing yourself, you know, so yeah, I think that that would be really, really cool.